Omni Prodigy, let's talk about the easiest way to get Emperor in Cyrodiil PvP. As you can see, I'm in second place here for Emperorship on the leaderboards. I have a huge gain from third and fourth place, but the first place has a big gain on me, and that's because he's had Emperor for 10 hours here, and then he added another two days before that. So, how did he get Emperor? He started this campaign one hour earlier than me, so it's very important that you get in the campaign right when it starts. Um, another thing too, you'll notice I'm a level 34 here, and uh, I'll show you the Emperor here. He's a level 33, so he's actually one level lower than me, and he has a super advantage on that, uh, because as you gain AP, you also gain levels. And in Kind, the Kind campaign, it's only for levels 50 and under. There are no champion points. so. Everything's balanced in this campaign. Another thing that's great about this campaign is there's not a lot of guild or team play in this campaign. And once a player turns 50, they're kicked out of the campaign um, eventually. So um, it's only for under level 50. And let's say the Emperor turns level 50. Well, then what happens? Well, he gets kicked out of the campaign. And Mr. Second Place, me, I am now in first place because he gained too much alliance points and experience as the Emperor, and now he gets bumped out and I get to take that spot. In other campaigns, that doesn't happen, so that's why I highly recommend Kine, and the lower the level, the better. Again, the lower the level, the more, the more time you have to gain AP and experience without getting kicked out of the campaign, and your characters also hit harder. Now, my team has decided to run the scroll, that's why we are separated here. I don't like running scrolls. They are a distraction. They pull you from the main force. And a lot of times that scroll is going to pull 20, 30 players away from the keeps. It just really isn't an efficient way to use your time in order to gain AP. If you have the quest for the scroll, let somebody else return it. You still get the 3k AP as long as you're in the campaign. You don't have to return it personally or be on the team that's helping guide it. But scrolls pull 20, 30 people out of the campaign and uh, it's just not efficient so here i'm going to the front lines and i mentioned earlier that the lower the level you are the harder you hit so i'm a 34 here and i'm going to face these guys that are in their 40s um there's three of them and they're a gank squad you see them go invisible there so let's take out these guys and watch the alliance points that you get for solo killing a player here so here's one player Solo killed, I get 1.8k. That's the same alliance points as taking a resource. Okay, um, so this is much more efficient way of getting alliance points is killing players. If you're on a tank or a healer, you don't really have that option, so you have to run in a group. That guy just gave me 1.7k, um, and it took five, five, ten seconds to get that 1.7k. Uh, this guy gives me the most alliance points. I'm not sure why he gives me more. Oh, he's a level 46. Again, I'm a 34. He's going to give me more alliance points because he hasn't died in a long time. That's why it is. So 1.9. So a total of 5.4 thousand alliance points for killing three guys. Now here I'm in a larger group. And look at this. I'm wiping out guys. But watch how much alliance points I get in a larger group. I'm only at 64 alliance points right now. 77. 130. Not nearly the same amount of alliance points as when you kill them solo. So... If your only choice is to run in a group, run in a group. If you can do it solo, do it solo. Because look how many guys are just dropping here. And um, not getting very many alliance points. I haven't even got 1k yet. There's a Sorcerer Slayer. You get a Nightblade Slayer. And I just killed a bunch of Templars as well. So um, you do lose AP with a group. But, again, if you're not great at PvP or killing people, or you tend to die more often than not run with a large group because when you take over a resource or you take over a keep you get 1.6k for a resource and 6k minimum for taking over a keep so running with the group can help you do that and i have gotten emperorship on a healer i've gotten it on a tank so it doesn't you don't have to be a damage dealer or be you know supreme killer in pvp in order to get up there on the leaderboard you just have to be wherever the AP is. Now, if you're running for Emperor, another thing you must do is get your AP buff. So here, I'm in a delve. I just killed this boss, and she's going to give me this Blessings of War buff. 20% more alliance points for one hour. So again, any delve, any boss. If you go to your map, 
and if you've discovered the delve you just go to your options filters and turn on your objective so you can see the delves here you see how you see, don't see it now you see it turn on your objective so you can see where the delves are and go there every hour so you get 20 percent more alliance points and then in addition to that before you go into the campaign, upgrade your horse. Get as much upgrades as possible. Remember, Kine is a low-level PvP campaign. Most players don't have upgraded horses. For me, I upgrade my character's horses several weeks in advance before I ever even jump into the PvP campaign so that I have an advantage over everyone. So this character, he's uh, almost fully upgraded. He's got a speed of 60 and 51 stamina so again I'm able to get to the battle before everybody else and I might get more AP just because of the speed um, that my character has that most players in kind do not have so when you are trying to conserve your levels another thing you can do um, is buy wood repair kits the door repair kits and the stone wall repair kits from the siege merchants and repair your keeps because you get alliance points for doing that. And if you have the AP buff, you get even more alliance points. But you typically get about 1,000 alliance points per keep that you repair. And you don't go up levels either. You just get the alliance points and no experience. So you stay um, low level, which is what you want. And again, if you gain too much experience, you'll turn level 50 and you'll get kicked out of kind the below level 50 no champion point campaign. And in my situation here where I'm in second place and I have a huge lead on third, I just have to wait it out until first place vets out and he gets kicked out of the campaign automatically because it's only for under level 50. That's why Kine is the easiest campaign to get Emperorship on. Now some people will say it's actually hard to get Emperorship in Kine because there's no guilds or, or teams to push your Emperorship. Um, th that's true, but at the same time you don't have to play the guild politics where... You know, you don't get an invite to the leaderboard team because they don't want to split up their AP. Or if it's somebody else's turn, their friend's turn to become emperor, and you pass their friend on the leaderboards, they, you know, might punish you or not allow you to play in their teams. So you don't have to deal with all those nasty politics in kind. So anyways, make your low-level character today, upgrade that horse, and um, I do plan on going in on other alliance factions. But um, right now I'm doing blue. I did red a few months ago, and I kind of intend to do yellow if there's enough people in a month or two. So just let me know. If you have any questions, I'll be in Guild Chat 1, and if it's about armor or certain abilities, uh, we can help you with that as well.